Welcome to another video here on the Giant Take Podcast YouTube channel. I am Josh, and I am joined by my co-host, Alex. Joe Shane is now the GM of the New York Giants. Here's a clip from the podcast where we talk about it. Enjoy. Breaking news, we are here. Joe Shane is going to be the New York Giants general manager. He has been hired by the team and is official. Adam Schefter, Paul Schwartz. It's out. Even the New York Giants Twitter uh, has put out. They put out his words. And the Bills GM also had a few comments on the situation as well. Uh, and Joe Shane um, as a person. Ever since Joe Shane was interviewed, and he was the first interview, funny enough. So I think from that point, Giants fans and um, reporters just knew that he was the front runner for the job. He was the uh, number one candidate. And it came down to three guys who were the final, uh, the, 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 who brought, were brought back for second and I think in-person interviews. Joe Shane, the Bills assistant GM. Ryan Pohl is the, chief, the Chiefs executive director of player personnel. And Adam Peters, the 49ers assistant general manager. And then Shane was the favorite. There was no wrong candidate here. The Giants were not making the wrong decision with getting any of these guys. There were reasons why they all should have been taken. Now, Shane, he's a very good candidate. He was a lot of people, definitely Giants fans, the majority on Twitter, at least that I follow or that I see in my feed, uh, was their favorites. And I don't know if he was mine. I really liked Peters, but I think that uh, the, the decision, it was made, and it was a really good one. And now Joe Shane is the general manager of the Giants. So we're looking... To, towards brighter days uh, in this New York Giants on this team, right, with the roster and in this front office. Now, let me bring in my co-host, Alex. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, this is how I look at the three candidates. Poles had the upside. He was, like, kind of more of the, if we're talking in, like, player evaluation terms, he was more the guy with the raw talent, you know, lots of upside. And then Peters was kind of like your known commodity. Maybe he doesn't have he has a high floor, uh, maybe not the highest ceiling. And then Shane was kind of in the middle of those two. Um, that's kind of how I felt about this whole process. I like Peters as well. Uh, I thought he was probably the most qualified candidate, um, but I think I think Shane's going to be good for this organization, especially if he brings along Dabble, if he brings along Flores. We're we're looking in the right direction here. Uh, you know, we we can't say anything until he does fix this team, right? We're not going to say he's the greatest uh, GM ever yet. Um, but, uh, you know, we just, we got to wait and see what happens. But it, it's looking like it's a positive direction that the Giants are going in. We did this the right way. Now let's continue to do this the right way. Give Shane the control. Don't, no more Mara doing anything. All in Shane's hands, hopefully now. And hopefully it works out. I've said hopefully about five <laughs> times because there's a lot of hopefully. Right. Uh, I, but we, from right now, from this standpoint, right when we're recording Friday night, January 21st of 2022, the Giants are taking the step uh, in the right direction. So happy about that. And For interesting, sure. you're a dabble guy. I'm a dable guy. I, again, I don't know because <laughs> there's a mix of both. I think it's, I think it's dable, but yeah, because like when I think of dabble, it's like I'm dabbling on like this like pepper on my whatever like on my uh, steak. I don't know, like right? Isn't that like a word, right? When you dabble something, or yeah, like you're dabbling into something, like you're you're dabbling right. into a new career. Or so something. I don't, know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know which one's right, but it's funny. You're a dabble person. I'm a dabble person. So um, we'll we'll go into the uh, head coaching candidates in a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about Shane because Alex, as we know, it seems like he's a player's first guy. He likes the players. He wants them to be. Uh, it seems like together in the locker room, he wants to make sure they're all good. Even though he isn't like the VP of or uh, of or director as uh, Poles was a player personnel, he is still big on the players and scouting. Uh, it looks to be like he's very much into that. He's looking into bringing the right players to the team. And it doesn't look like he's into bringing in not just special teamers uh, like our former head coach, Joe Judge, or just, um, I don't know, blockbuster deals, maybe like a, like a, a Dave Gettleman, right? And just making moves like crazy with money. Seems like he conserves his money. Uh, he was a big part in the Josh Allen process. We know that. He was very high on him. But it looks like he's a very, uh, you know, he's going to do his research. And I think we have a, 
I don't know if we have the quote from the uh, Bills GM, but I remember reading from the Zoom press conference that he did talking about the, uh, you know, the uh, Joe Shane leaving the organization. He said, don't worry, he'll be doing his research. Like he will be doing his research into players. That is not a concern. Uh, and the New York Giants are getting a great, uh, you know, GM. And of course, he kind of has to say that, right? He's not going to not say that, but um, just, just the acknowledgement from him. Uh, and also the statement uh, on Shane's message to Giants fans is a positive one. And we can get to all of that. But Alex, I know you had a point. Sorry about that. What I was going to say is while he, I, I know you're saying he wouldn't make as many like ludicrous moves or stuff like that. I think he's going to be aggressive though. I think you need to be aggressive when fixing this team. You're going to have to make some moves. Um, whether the that Bills is trading got Stephon up Stephon Diggs, right? So that that's a big yeah, thing. Traded for Stephon but Diggs. Will he that make, was a huge trade. Will he make like a signing for a risky Kenny Galladay injury prone older wide receiver? Maybe not. You never know. And I think that was a big Kevin Abrams, Dave Gettleman move. Had to move around a lot of money and to sign a four year, seventy two million dollar contract with Galladay. I don't know if he'll do. He can definitely make big moves, Alex. But I think he makes. I think strategy is along in that, and I wouldn't say the Kenny Galladay signing as an example was a strategic signing. I don't know how... I, I wouldn't say it was a good signing. Back then, we said that, and now we still say that, right? It's even more apparent now because he played a season and wasn't so good for the Giants. Um, it could be better, right? We don't know. But I would say the Dix trade, it might have worked out for both sides. But the Bills, what they got out of it is a number one wide receiver for Josh Allen to target. And I would say what the Bills got, they definitely needed, and it, it's turning positive for them. Sorry. Again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And they also traded up in the draft for Josh Allen, right? So there's all sorts of things that maybe he won't be afraid to do. You might be surprised. Could he possibly trade up from the second round into the late first round for a quarterback in this year's draft if he doesn't think their value at five or a good value at five or seven? Maybe. I, I think we're going to have to look at this differently. I think he's younger. He's more analytical. I think you're going to see more aggressive moves than you saw with the uh, with Dave, who didn't know how to operate a computer. You're right. Well, he's all, he was also an older guy. I mean, come on. We, we all have our tech issues here and there. Um, <laughs> but it is what it is. Let, what do you want to go to now, Alex? We can, do you want to talk about his message um, to, yeah, to let's the go fans? Yeah, let's go to his message. Why don't you read his oh, message? Oh, right, because I'm good with the quotes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're good at reading. Thanks. I know you put me in this position on purpose. Okay, okay so here's Joe Shane's uh, message to uh, the Giants fans. He said, now the work begins. My immediate focus is to hire a head coach with whom I will work in lockstep with to create a collaborative environment for our football operations. We will cast a wide net. It can be former head coaches, first time head coaches, but more importantly, it has to be a person who possesses the ability to lead an organization and the ability to motivate and develop players. On the personal side, we will begin to evaluate our roster and prepare for the draft and free agency. Our goal is to build a roster that will be more that will be competitive, have depth, and most importantly, win football games. That last uh, statement there, a big concern this past season and in the last five seasons at least, with New York Giants fans winning football games, closing football games, getting to the playoffs, getting wins. That's a big concern, and that is something that he mentions he will address, and we hope that he will stick to his word and address that. Dave Gettleman came in here. He said, I'm going to rebuild this offensive line. I'm going to do it well. He didn't do that, right? So, And here's the deal, and now I've gotten it, Alex. With, with Joe Judge coming in here, we fell for that opening press conference. Maybe Joe Shane is going to have a really good opening press conference. We can't fall for this stuff again. So... He says this whole thing in the last line. We're going to evaluate our roster for the draft. Our goal, be competitive, have depth, and win football games. That's a great statement. Any guy in football can write the same statement. So take that in. We love what he did as the assistant general manager. He seemed really qualified. He was really qualified. It's not that he seemed it. He was really qualified for the job. Now he's in the job position. Now he's got to succeed. And that's what we got to see as Giants fans. Can he turn that roster that front office, those free agents, those uh, draft, those uh, NFL draft players that the Giants pick, can he turn them into positivity, into depth, into progression, and into wins? That's what he said. Most importantly, football wins. That gets you to the Super Bowl. That wins you the Super Bowl. 
Um, that brings in trophies. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely very qualified. He was probably, beh- I'd say behind Peters, he might have been the most qualified GM candidate out there. Um, and you could even argue he's more qualified than Peters. So I think we got the right guy. I think hopefully it'll all work out. We got to see what he does here in free agency. Who's he going to cut? That's going to be the big thing to see. Are we going to see a Blake Martinez cut? Are we going to see a James Bradbury cut? Are we going to see restructures? Are we going to see extensions? Sterling Shepard, what's he going to do? Saquon Barkley, the Bills have historically not really had great running backs and never uh, valued them very highly. Is Shane going to value Saquon Barkley? All these questions. Daniel Jones, of course. So that's what I want to go to, Alex. What's the biggest thing that can happen under Shane when it comes to the roster? And I think you said his name. I think it's the quarterback position, right? The most important position in football, the most maybe important position in sports. What is he going to do with Jones? And is that going to be his decision? Or is that going to be the head coaching decision? Or is that going to be a collaborative effort between both of those guys? It did come out on Twitter. I want to say it was also from Ian O'Connor. We have a quote about him later in the episode. About John Mara. Yeah, about John Mara. There was quotes that apparently all three of these guys, Poles, Peters, and Shane, all believed that Daniel Jones was uh, dealt a unfair hand and that he could possibly have potential to be the quarterback. Uh, at least this is what we're hearing, right? We don't know what they actually think, but that's what's coming out. So could that possibly mean that Daniel Jones is staying? Uh, well, you know, he most likely is staying, but is he going to play or not? That's going to be the real question. And, uh, the, you know, the cap situation's tight this year. Got to see what he does. Is, is Shane going to look at it like, you know, this year's a wash anyway? Let's not restructure. Let's not push back uh, salaries to next year where our cap situation's pretty good. You know, these are all these are all things that we're going to have to take a look at. And I think what he does with free agency is going to set up for what we might see in the draft. And Alex, I think we talked about it on the episode where we talked about Dave Gettleman retiring and I think Joe Judge getting fired. I think we grouped that into one. Um, we, we mentioned how Gettleman, it seemed like he was going out with a bang. He uh, maybe made the decision or was told, this is your last season to prove yourself by Mara. Or maybe he said, I'm retiring after this year and said, all right. This is my last hurrah. Let's throw the Giants into cap hell. And that's what he did. With all the signings he did uh, in free agency, he brought in Dor- Dory Jackson and uh, he brought in Kenny Galladay, right? Those were the main two that cost a lot of money. Uh, there were some other moves in there as well. He got John Ross. I'm trying to think of what else he did in the offseason. I mean, Afadi Adenabo, he didn't even st- stick around for long. Kyle Rudolph, that was another, that was another cap hit. So he made some... He made some troubling, interestingly, uh, interestingly weird. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this rule uh, uh, um, moves. Excuse me. So he kind of put the Giants in a bad place. He put the Giants and the future general manager Joe Shane in a bad place to start out his tender uh, with the Giants. So tenure tender. Yeah. What do I? Ten years. Yeah, yeah. What am I? What am I saying? You gotta Alex? give him three years. What I mean. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm about to go high. You got to give, give Shane three years. You got to give Shane three years. Yeah. You got to give the coach three years now because we're in a deep hole here where we are right now. You got to give them time. As much as we're not going to jump to conclusions that he's the best, we're also not going to say he's the worst yeah. after one or two bad 